is Minnesota really a trap game for Penn State? Welcome into this episode of Four Downs with Landon Tangwall, where we take a look at Penn State's opponent's film, break it down so you guys are ready for everything that Minnesota does this weekend. Please like, comment, subscribe, and let's get right into it. This first set of plays, we are taking a look at the passing game for Minnesota here. And Brosmer, I think he's a he's a really good quarterback. I, I would I would compare him very similarly to Illinois and Wisconsin. How the offense, though, they, they want to get the ball out quick, and that's what this is. This is a cut up of the short passes. It's a lot of hitting them right on these hitch routes, about five, six, seven yards downfield. If the cornerbacks are playing off at all, they will take advantage of that. It doesn't matter if it's man. It doesn't matter if it's zone. They see that, like, they want to go after it. And a lot of times, it's to number nine, their star wide receiver. But Brosmer, it's a lot of staring down. I mean, if you look at his eyes, 16, the quarterback, as soon as he takes this, he's looking up to the top of the screen the entire time and then just throws it anyways. So I think there's some opportunity for maybe us to get some interceptions. I mean, like, look, it's, it's every single time you can watch his eyes here on this quick out, watch the quarterback, eyes snap out, they don't move, it's one, two, throw. I mean, that is their offense uh, in a nutshell. They run the ball and they get it out quick in the pass game. So give them space like this. I mean, they're going to take this quick route every time. So I hope Terry Smith and the cornerbacks are watching this and the safeties saying, hey, we got to come down on these guys uh, and not give them any space. And then another piece where they get into the flats are kind of rolling one way, coming back the other. And so they found some success in this. And I think anytime you're playing a defense that's that you're better than, these are the kind of plays you resort to to just get a little bit of space. And hopefully, you know, they, they did a good job right here grabbing all of these linebackers. They really fell for this fake. And then, boom, into the flat. And a big piece of that, too, is Minnesota's run game. If it's successful, these type of plays work. If it's not successful, they don't work as well. Uh, but getting it to the running back in the flat here, that is kind of the first read. The first thing they want to do is get it into the flat. Now, I put this play at the end. How do you stop it? You stamp someone like this, boom, and then they'll, they'll think twice, and they won't be as quick to turn up the field, and they're going to be a little nervous catching that ball. So that's how you stop it, uh, is come down and lay the boomstick. Jalen Reed, some cornerbacks. We saw Davian Collins do it at the end of the game last week. So hopefully we can be physical, because I think this is a Minnesota group that is, is fairly physical on this offensive side. These next set of plays is Minnesota's blitzing game, and so they'll mix it up a little bit uh, from game to game, but I think UCLA gave us a really good look at kind of what they do. So we got the safety and then one of the outside linebackers blitzing here, um, and it does a good job. He gets home. UCLA's offensive line is not very good, but they were getting burnt against UCLA when they were blitzing, and uh, well, something that they really like to do here is bring chop blitz, and what chop blitz is is cornerback blitz. So this guy right here, they bring him off the edge. And the reason why chop blitz is so effective sometimes is because you're not expecting a cornerback to blitz. That's not really on your radar for a quarterback or for a offensive lineman. But right here, you see when you bring chop blitz one way and then throw a screen the other way, that's just kind of an unlucky call. You get caught in a bad situation and you get a really big first down. And then you come back later and do the same exact thing. Look at number five down here. We're bringing that chop cornerback blitz. Uh, no one accounts for him, comes free, and they run a screen again. And then this might be one of the most impressive plays I've seen from UCLA, and I think shows Minnesota's inability to make tackles. So I think that's something that we can take. I mean, this is like Marshawn Lynch-esque over here. It's something that we can take advantage of, and uh, a poor tackling team, I mean, I think that is going to be one of the deciding factors. They are pretty physical, like I said, on offense. Can we wrap up, but also can they wrap up? So... They can bring they, they continue to bring this blitz. And now this time, what's cool, you'll see this a lot now once we get to third down. Um, so they bring these two linebackers right here up in the A-gap. So this is double A-gap mug. So that's when you have both backers up pressed. And so for the offensive line right here, you're thinking there's a lot of thoughts going on. You're having to kind of get vertical and figure everything out. It's it's you're not a, it's not a very confident block from the offensive line. And so what they do is they drop one guy. Uh, and then they bring number 16 off the edge. So he drops into coverage, 16's blitzing, and once again, they, it gets picked up and they get burnt again. So when they bring blitzes, I mean, they the UCLA team really has found a, a weak spot in their defense uh, and, and kind of more of the same right here where, once again, they like this look. Penn State's going to get 
this double a gap mug look but this time neither of them really rush and i know one of them's on the one of them uh this guy right here he has the running back but i mean that's kind of a waste you, you got two guys just standing there doing nothing and then garbers throws a really nice pass down to the three yard line and you see this a couple times they did the same thing it's it's not like you need a spy on garbers we played him he's not that athletic that's not what he does uh and, and so you got two guys right here just sitting watching and garber sits back has no pressure and is able to deliver a ball not complete but nonetheless i, I question minnesota's defense sometimes looking at it this doesn't seem ideal here just having two guys not really doing anything but that is overall what you can expect to see this type of look is what we're going to get on second and long third and long so penn state's offensive line has to come ready if you're looking for a more efficient way to get around campus try out the honda moto compacto or if you need something a little bit bigger the Honda Pilot is a great way to get friends and family to the tailgates on Saturdays. Come on down to Bobby Rail Honda of State College, driven by a higher standard. So I mentioned earlier how Minnesota's offense resorts to kind of gadget plays to get through games, especially against when they when they are the inferior opponent. They have to scheme it up, uh, and I think we can see a lot of that. They love this play-action fake into the screen game because it kind of gets everybody thinking that it's a run going one way, uh, and then it's, okay, it's a pass and then you dump it back off to number one, who uh, has shown to be really explosive up to this point, some good blocking. And I think that's another piece of this Minnesota offense is their offensive line. None of them are fantastic athletes, but they are good, hard-nosed football players. That, that Midwest country offensive lineman that you want, that's what Minnesota has. So same exact play here. You fake the play action, roll back, no one's over there. I mean, it's, it's almost like a trick play, but I wouldn't even classify it all the way as that. It's a really good screen that they go back to pretty frequently. Um, and like I said, the offensive line just does a good job getting out, covering guys up, and then getting down the field. So it's something they're going to, I think, they will use against us to make sure that we're disciplined. And now a little bit different here. So now they have their, they fake to the running back, and that's what you'll see. They'll, they'll put guys in motion. So watch zero right here. Comes across the motion and think, okay, he's not doing anything. Circles back. Screen game over in the corner, first down. They pick it up on third and two. So something to keep an eye on if you are Tom Allen in this Penn State defense. You have to be disciplined because I do think that's something with this screen game. You're looking at the linebackers. Can the linebackers be disciplined? And Kobe King has continued to, to grow and get better this year. I am a little bit worried about Tony Rojas and just kind of he's trying to play superhero football when we don't necessarily need him to do that. We need him to play and do his 111th, do his job. So the linebackers are going to be vital in this game, and we'll look at their run game in a second as well from their impact of tackling and being where they need to be. All right, this last cut up is just their run game, and it can get explosive at times. They have, uh, like I said, a, an offensive line that takes pride in being able to run the ball. And you watch this push here. I mean, there's some up front. Those are some good double teams. They're getting vertical. And then the last moment right here, 69, walls this off. That's a really nice block, and then they spring one for what ends up actually being ruled down at the one-yard line, but nonetheless, a really nice run there. So now, and they mix it up. Their run game is kind of like ours. We'll run something different every week. So they're going to bring this tight end. It's called a split flow motion when you bring the tight end across and crack down on this guy. So they bring him down, crack down, and that creates some nice space. They get really good blocking from everybody else. I mean, look at that wall right there. There's just a, a wall of UCLA defenders and there you go 24 can tote the rock make a couple guys miss so that's something they'll come to this is kind of an inside zone run with that split flow motion from the tight end and then this guy's special I mean number one he makes a lot of plays and you're like okay he might he could play somewhere else he I mean this is a talented running back 24 will come in and spell him uh but but one is the superstar really the guy that took over against USC where they rushed for well over 200 yards and they took USC. Ooh, PJ Fleck was happy after that one. And I think this sums up, I mean, one doesn't have a lot. He doesn't have a ton to work with. I mean, those are still good blocks and that's where his, his vision, I mean, this is a run basically mid zone left. So he's aiming right here. And so he goes, nothing is there. I mean, that is completely blown up, but he's got the vision backside, cut it back, make another move. And then off to the races. 
Huh. And they can't tackle him. I mean, he's hard to bring down, too. So, I mean, that's another thing. Like I said, with our linebackers, that's something. We've struggled with tackling. We struggled a little bit against Purdue, and then especially against Ohio State, we have to be on point with our tackling. I appreciate you guys tuning in to this episode of Four Downs with Landon Tangwall. We will have the pregame of Minnesota out tomorrow night, so be on the lookout for that. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.